Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, have you noticed it's about quality, not quantity? If you look at Allah Almighty, He has told us in Surah Al-Mulk and in a few other places in the Quran about the quality over the quantity. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. It is he who created death and life in order to test you who from amongst you has better deeds. He didn't say more deeds. Sometimes people do a lot of deeds. Yes, it's good to do a lot of deeds on condition that the quality is acceptable. If the quality of those deeds is not acceptable, then you're wasting your time with the quantity. So for example, Salatul Taraweeh. Yes, we should be fulfilling it and we should be making sure that the quality is acceptable. What is the point of reading through the Quran, zooming through it without any merit whatsoever, without fulfilling the rules of recitation, the rules of the eloquence and the pronunciation of the Quran. If that is the case, you'd rather read less in Salat al-Taraweeh in terms of Quran and fulfill a beautiful quality of prayer. The units of prayer would be fulfilled in a beautiful way, although you may not be able to complete the entire Quran. Now, there is definitely merit to complete the entire Quran, but never, never at the expense of the quality. If you are to read a bit of the Quran every day, but trying to ensure that you're reading it to the best of your capacity, your ability, and you're improving over time, then you're doing the right thing. But if you are trying to cover as much as you can simply to get done with it, that is wrong. Now, I know there are people who are religious, people who are pious, who still do this. It's still a mistake. If you are rushing through the Quran because you want to do so many completions or khatmas of the Quran and you are compromising the rules of recitation, my brother, my sister, no matter how pious you may be, you are still making a mistake because it was never about the quantity over the quality. If quantity and quality come together, then alhamdulillah, you do as much as you can and it will be rewarding. But Allah has only given you 24 hours in a day. From that, you have so much to do. And for acts of worship, you have certain acts of worship you will be able to fulfill. You cannot do deeds more than the time that you've been allotted by Allah Almighty, especially when you're compromising the quality. If you are to fulfill two units of prayer, but you are to do it beautifully with uh, amazing khushur and with beautiful concentration, uh, calmness known as tuma'nina, that calmness and you are, you, you know, when someone sees you, they can see that this person is engaged in an act of worship. That's very good. It's better than doing so many of those units of prayer, but literally like a duck or a chicken pecking on the ground, you know, up and down, up and down. And before we know it, it's like a race. It's like you're rushing to achieve something. It's like you're huffing and puffing. We need to change this. This is a mindset that is absolutely unacceptable. As much as people may tell you, no, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to get it finished. If it is coming at the price where you are paying the quality over the quantity, sorry, you're the quantity over the quality, in that case, you are wrong. You need to make sure you do it properly. And for that reason, when you're fulfilling your salah, when you're reading Quran, when you're doing the dhikr, don't whip through it. Don't just rush in a way that nobody who, would, who understands Arabic would even know what on earth you're reading. That's an insult to Allah. I say this today because subhanAllah, I've come across a recitation that people were saying, oh, this guy reads brilliant, he reads brilliant. But to be honest, he was eating up his words. He was eating up uh, so much. It was difficult to even follow with this person. Trust me, there's no merit. You can finish the entire Quran in one day. If that's what you did, you may just earn a sin for what you did because the hadith says, There are some reciters who read the Quran while the Quran is cursing them. How does the Quran curse you? 
Number one, because you have not applied it in your life. Number two, you have not bothered to read it correctly, properly or try at least. Or you are rushing through it as an insult to the owner of that word. The one who, uh, meaning who is that? It is Allah, your maker and mine. This is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, let's remember, do not compromise the quality of your deeds. The same applies to your fasting. If you're just fasting for the sake of fasting and you're not worried about the quality of the fast, it needs to be amazing, beautiful quality, not something that will come crashing and crumbling. How do I protect the quality of my fast? By ensuring that I don't swear, by ensuring that I engage in more dhikr, remembrance of Allah, my salah is in order, on time, uh, I'm dressed appropriately, I don't listen or do anything that will be uh, uh, in transgression to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands, in transgression of Allah's commands, and at the same time, I try to maximize the good deeds like charity and so many other things. That's the quality of the fast. So the fast is more like a, a you know, a, a frame. In that frame, you throw in a lot of good deeds and you beautifully enjoy the day. Now, that is today's lesson. I ask Allah Almighty to bless us all and to help us rectify this. The imams of the masajid as well need to hear what I've just said, as well as the others need to hear what I've just said. Because subhanAllah, it's very saddening to see that people think, oh, you know, we finished 10 Qur'ans, we finished 5 Qur'ans, we finished so much in one night or two. You know what? If it was done properly with proper recitation, if you would be proud to read in front of Allah Almighty that way, then Alhamdulillah. But if you were rushing through it, whipping through it as though you had a train to catch, it is an insult to Allah Almighty. Let's not do that. So let's correct each other in the good way. May Allah Almighty make it easy for all of us. We don't want to be falling into those who will be cursed by the Quran on the Day of Judgment. We would like it to be accepted, not just the Quran, but even our salah, our prayer, our fast. You know, you go into rukur, you go into sujood. Yes, you, you don't, you're not, you shouldn't be so slow, especially when you're an imam, that the people behind you are not even considered. But you can go in a pace that is good enough where you are able to recite it smoothly, correctly, without compromising the rules and at the same time considering the elderly and the women. If there are people who are reading behind the imam who are unable to, for, to uh, maybe stand or unable to read all the prayer with the imam because of a pace that the imam is reading, then they should either read at home or in a different masjid. But the reason I say they should do that is because there is only a certain point up to which that imam has the permissibility to, to, to actually speed up what is happening. Beyond that, it becomes sinful for everyone. So at that juncture, you're excused. You're unwell, you don't have to actually be here with everyone else. If you're not well, you're excused. And if you're, if you're not able to stand, you may sit. But you don't compromise the quality and relation with Allah simply because you cannot manage. May Allah Almighty make it easy for our elderly, the sickly, the women, the children, whoever else it may be. May Allah Almighty make it easy for one and all. This was a very important message. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.